What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Feed the Beast Infinity Evolved Expert Mode. Oh, yeah, guys. So I've been spending some time around the base upgrading our power situation. Since we're producing so much power over at Wellington Towers, I figured, yeah, we should upgrade our power situation here. So uh, <laughs> first thing you'll notice is that I added in 10 more of these resonant energy cells. Yep. That took a bit of crafting and a little bit of redstone, but we got that all hooked up and then overnight they went ahead and filled up. I kind of felt like we were making a lot of power and we were wasting that power because, you know, we weren't storing it anywhere. <laughs> so now, yeah, we have a lot of energy stored up. Each one of these holds 80 million RF and then they can output 32,000 RF per tick. Right on. So down below here, uh, you can't really see it because of that, but yeah, I did swap out all of our power cables uh, that are running along here with these resonant flux ducts. I did not swap out the cable that goes down into our nuclear reactor area. I left those as the redstone because we don't really need that much power at the moment. So anyway, uh, the way this is set up is at the very top we have a tensor rack there that is dumping power. And then this one just feeds the power straight down, does not go side to side. Um, so this tensor rack also has a resonant inner, or conduit. <laughs> what is this thing called? Flux duct. A resonant flux duct on either side that is sending the power straight down. So it's like three rows of 32,000 RF per tick. Um, yeah, so we got a lot of power there. So the lasers went overnight, and I, after this happened, I decided to put in some machine frame resonance. So we cooked up some of those. So we have those on hand now. Since we have a lot of power and doesn't really matter at this point, I can just, you know, throw those in there. They just take a bit of time to happen, but yeah, we're producing enough power where we can easily make these. And we did get our iridium ore, which is awesome, but we're just going to leave that there for right now because I want to talk about something else real quick. <laughs> so currently we're producing our beef wellingtons using the Steve's workshop because we were unable to get the cyclic assembler to craft those, right? Uh, we put the schematic here, it's just a blank one, and we can set the recipe by doing the firm tofu white mushroom from Pam's Harvest Craft, spinach also from Pam's Harvest Craft, and dough. It says right here, Beef Wellington, we click the check mark and it says, two times list all veggies, one food dough, one list all raw meat. So let's put those four ingredients in here. And I do have an energy cell in here that we can power this thing. Yeah, okay. So right now, wait. It crafted it. I did this before and this didn't craft it. Okay, well, you know what? There is an update to this mod. <laughs> Dang it. Ah, yep. Uh, the mod pack's been updated since I last tried this and it looks like that now works. I was gonna say that the two times list all veggie means that this will not craft, but I tried in a creative mode with the red Minecraft mushrooms and it did work. Well, that makes things a lot easier. Because I was going to uh, start crossbreeding mushrooms, get those to the 10, 10, 10, and then replace all the white ones with these red ones. But, you know, if this just works, <laughs> that is great. I did not test this again. I just assumed it was never going to work. Well, okay. Well, we got that solved. So I'm going to swap out that Steve's factory. No, not Steve's factory manager. Steve's workshop workbench with a cyclic assembler. This uses way less power. It's 20 RF per tick. Uh, when it's going full speed, so that's 20 that it can do per second, which I think is a lot faster than the Steve's Workshop one is doing. And this uses way less power since we don't have to power it with the Lava Fabricator. Oh man, yeah, that totally just blew my mind that that worked right like that. Okay, that's cool. So yeah, that's what we're going to do. We're going to swap that out so that'll allow us to get more power out of Wellington Towers than what we were doing before. Well guys, now I'm confused. I brought the cyclic assembler over here to Wellington Towers and I swapped out the Steve's <laughs> workshop uh, with it. And I have the schematic here. This is set up exactly the same. I just double checked that I put everything in the exact same space. So we had the firm tofu, the mushroom, uh, the spinach, and then the dough, just like we did before. And I click this, now watch these numbers, they go down and then you refill and that's it, nothing else happens. So it's like it tries to craft one, it fails, it uses the items, but then it doesn't continue crafting, which is really weird. I don't, I don't get it. <laughs> so it's ignoring redstone signal. Um, yeah, it's configured to receive items from the top and send it over to the right into our deep storage unit here. 
And I was looking at this number. This number doesn't change. It ends in 50. If we take this out and put it back in there, it uses some of these things. It uses two mushrooms. Look at that. And it still says 50. So it's using the items. It's just deleting them and not producing what it says it's going to produce. I don't know. It worked, and then now it's not working. <laughs> so I think what we do have to do is swap out uh, those mushrooms for the red mushrooms like I said I was going to. So let's go back to the base and work on that. Cool. So I set up a moistener. This is from Forestry for Minecraft. Uh, a moistener can produce mycelium, and we need mycelium to crossbreed mushrooms. Okay, so we are going to be producing mycelium out of this thing eventually. So I just stuck a stack of wheat in here. It's using some water, going through this process, going back over here and turning into moldy wheat. And then once that all completes, I do believe it'll do it again and turn into decaying wheat. But every time that processes, this progress bar moves a little bit. And when this gets all the way to the end, I believe the seeds turn into mycelium. It's been a while since I've done this. Now there's a few other ways that we can get mycelium. We can, if we were into blood magic, we could use the alchemic chemistry set. Um, we can do the sludge boiler if we had that set up, which I don't have set up. I don't have that crafted. And this like gives you a nasty poison or weakness or hunger effect if you're nearby it. Yeah, anyway, we don't have that set up. This is like the safest method of doing it. So this is the way we are making our mycelium. So yeah, we just have to wait for this progress to go over here. I believe it uses a seed and gives us one of those myceliums. Now, I was just thinking about a minute ago uh, why that worked the first time to make the beef Wellington. And then when we tried moving it over to Wellington Towers, it did not work. The reason why was because there was only one spinach and one mushroom. Uh, so it had to use both of those to create the item. When we moved it over here, there was a stack of mushrooms, which that was the first item it came to that was the list all veggie. So it just took two of those. It doesn't know the difference. And that's why the recipe was failing. Cool. So now we got that understood. Um, yeah, I was looking in a creative world trying to get this to work. And like I said, it does work with the red mushrooms because those are called like crop something instead of list all veggie. Anyway, it's a different item. Uh, the cyclic assembler recognizes it as a different item. So we can go ahead and use that. So yeah, let's go ahead and let this finish up here. We'll get our mycelium. I'm gonna start crossbreeding our mushrooms. Do we even have mushroom spores? We do not. We have the white mushroom spore. Um, okay. Mushroom spore. Let's do a red mushroom spore. Uh, so that's nether wart crossbred with poppy on mycelium. And we do have nether wart and we do have poppy. And I think I've done this before in agrarian skies too. And it had to be in a dark area for this to work. But yeah, let's get our mycelium. I'll spread it out, get a few pieces of it, and we'll be back to check out the crossbreeding. All right, guys, so here we are. We're underneath our base currently. And yeah, so this is what we have set up. We have soul sand with the nether ward planted on it. And then over here we have just farmland with poppies planted on it. Now the poppies can only grow when there's light around. Let's speed these up. Let's water can them. Yeah, so we need uh, the poppies to grow all the way to maturity. Because I do believe the plants have to be mature in order to crossbreed. Now... <laughs> This plant cannot grow here. <laughs> Nether wart can only grow if there's no light. So let's go ahead and grow this one. Yeah, it's kind of weird how this works. Okay, so now we're in complete darkness. We got the poppies mature and we got the nether wart mature. Now I believe all we have to do is this. And I don't know if it has to be light or dark for the mushrooms to spread. Or I guess for the, the crossbreeding action to happen here. I guess we're going to find out. And I kind of feel like we're only going to see mushrooms because I don't think poppies can grow on mycelium. I could be wrong about that. I'm not 100% sure on that. And I, we might need light here. This might be why we're not seeing anything. I guess we can try light. Let's put light here and try breeding. Yeah. It's one of these combinations and you'll get it eventually. <laughs> but yeah, we saw it was another wart and poppies with mycelium underneath it. So yeah. Also, I believe in one version of this mod pack, it might have been a 2.3 or something. They turned off weeds. So it takes a long time like this because normally you'd be seeing weeds sprouting there. But yeah, since we can't get weeds, I think it's trying to make weeds and failing and then just trying again so it takes longer. 
But anyway, I'm going to go at this until we can finally get these. And mine, I, th I think it has to be dark now. <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, I'm going to try. Oh, there it is. Yeah, there we go. Red mushroom spores. We got it. It looks like darkness was what we needed. It says this plant is fertile and can grow. So it does have to be in darkness. Uh, so what we need to do, let's grab this guy. Uh, let's take it upstairs, wherever my seed analyzer is. I think I'm gonna have to bring the seed analyzer down here. Um, can I stop going on the elevator, please? <laughs> uh, let's see, it's over here, right? Yeah, seed analyzer and our agricultural journal. And we're also gonna want the clippings. Uh, the clipper. Okay, let's take that downstairs. Let's get over here real quick, all right. So seed analyzer plus our journal plus these spores. And good, it's a quick one. It doesn't take a minute to go. So we got three, three, three red mushroom spores. Cool. So we can go ahead and remove these guys. Uh, we can remove that and that. And I did farm up a bunch of this mycelium, which is awesome. So we can just do that, this, that, and one of those. Then where's my spores right here? So we'll place that, we'll water can those a little bit. We just need these to get up to like one growth stage or two growth, oh, it's too late. There we go. Yeah, these grow pretty quickly. So then we can use our clippers. We'll get one of those. And now we have two 333 red mushrooms to start crossbreeding with up to the 10, 10, 10 stage, cool. So let me go ahead and work these mushrooms for a little while. Get them to the 10, 10, 10s, and then we're going to replace all of the white mushrooms over in the farm with the red ones. And hopefully everything should just work. So, yeah, I'll see you guys in a little while. All right, cool. So, I got the 10, 10, 10 of the mushrooms done, wherever they are. Yeah, we got the mushroom clippings right here. Growth, gain, strength, all 10s, which is really, really awesome. I put the mushroom spores over here for safekeeping somewhere. But I just sum at the top of the screen. All right, so we got red mushroom spores. Oh, you know what? I guess we did have brown mushroom spores this entire time, and I didn't even notice them. But anyway, now we got red ones. <laughs> uh, yeah, so anyway, we have the red mushroom spores. We got the clippings. I need to fill those all out. And I just remembered <laughs> when I was growing these things that they have to be grown in darkness. They cannot be grown in light. Yep. So dark and glass, we're going to make this, or I guess dark glass from Extra Utilities. Just got done cooking up a bunch of this thickened glass. Let's actually take a look. This stuff is really cool. Uh, what this does is it looks like glass. You can see through it, but it does not let light through, which is awesome. So you can see things happening, but yeah, it prevents light from going through. So yeah, we're going to go ahead and use this stuff here. And then it uses the thickened glass, which is sandy glass smelted. And to get that, it's two pieces of sand, two pieces of glass. You get four pieces of the sandy glass out of it. Yeah, and you smelt that down for the thickened glass, and there you go. Cool. So let's go ahead and craft five stacks worth. I think we only needed four stacks worth for what we're doing. But yeah, we're going to go ahead and surround the area with this darkened glass. I have to remove the glowstone from that area as well, so it's not lit. I believe we can also remove the water, since it's all going to be growing on this mycelium. Uh, I'm going to have to remove the till land, put down the dirt, spread the mycelium, then place down the crop sticks, then plant all this stuff. Yeah, it's going to take a minute. I'm going to get this done. We'll be back. So uh, originally I was going to replace the white mushroom level with the red mushrooms. And then I remembered that they had to be in darkness. So we made that dark glass and I was going to put the dark glass all the way around here. And then I thought this building would look kind of weird that the very first floor has glass on it. Um, yeah, that and we're going to be spawning a bunch of monsters in here. This is three high. So we'd be getting endermen. They might take our dirt. I don't know. I just thought... It'd be better just to move the wheat down here to this level, which caused me to <laughs> do more work, but that's fine. That's fine. Uh, our mushrooms are now growing on this top level. I was going to make the darkened glass only one block tall. Yep. So it'd only be this level right here. But unfortunately, these mushrooms do not grow if they do not have an air block above them. If the darkened glass is directly above them, it says they cannot grow. So I had to make this two blocks tall. So that's what we got. We're spawning monsters in here. Yeah. Uh, eventually, I would like to get myself one of those magnum torches, but they are super expensive in this mod pack, and they require two bedrockium ingots, which those require three plutonium. And yeah, we're using our plutonium for other things. So for now, we're just going to have monsters in our mushroom patch. It's fine. 
Uh, the harvester does harvest uh, all of these mushrooms through that darkened glass, and regardless if there's monsters in there or not, so it does not matter. Oh, you know what? I left this. This workbench here from when I was tilling the land. Let's go ahead and remove this guy. There's no point in having that up here anymore. Okay, so I don't think I showed you guys this. I did some rearranging on this after last episode. Uh, I kind of rearranged the way our pressers are. I rearranged where this chest is. I was just trying to make things look a little bit nicer. Yeah, I did that on both sides over here. And then earlier today, uh, before I started recording, I just got done rearranging the way our generators are. So we have this row of generators over here. Yep, I moved them up one block so you can see them all. The bottom ones aren't in the ground anymore. I tried to make the pipes as nice as I could. Uh, I did swap out the redstone energy flux ducts for the the redstone ones for the resonant ones. Yes, that's what I did. <laughs> okay, so yeah, these are more expensive than the impulse item ducts. So I figured we could use more of those to pipe items into two different sets. And we just use a resonant flux duct one set of those two all the way down the center on both sides. So that's the way it's looking. Uh, obviously, I need to make more of these generators to completely fill out this side. But yeah, we'll get to that in time. So I was taking a look at this deep storage unit. And this says we have 650,000 of these beef wellingtons. And each one of those makes, what is this, um, 152,520.5 RF? Yeah. So I did the math. Uh-huh. Was it 650,000 times 152,520? That is like just about 100 billion RF that we have in this deep storage unit. <laughs> this is so much potential power that we have in here. Oh man, I want to keep making this and seeing how much we can get and adding more generators. Eventually we'll have the more compact 64 times generators and we'll be able to use this and produce more power more quickly. Like if we need a lot of burst energy for something, but yeah. So anyway, um, the resident retriever I have set for the red mushroom now. I removed all the white mushrooms from here and we have collected a decent amount of the red ones. I let this go for just a few minutes and it's collected almost 12,000 of those. And yeah, I think we should be good to go to try this out. So first of all, uh, we got enough here to do one stack. So let's turn this on. So that is crafting. And that number is going up over here. So we can say ignored on this. So that'll be getting in all those items and this should start crafting. There we go. So this is crafting way faster than the Steve's <laughs> workshop version was going. Yeah, look at how fast that goes, man. <laughs> that is so quick and it doesn't use hardly any power. It's using, I think 20 RF per tech when it's going. Now I'm noticing this doesn't seem to have a lot of power inside. Why is that not gaining? Why is that not gaining? Oh, you know what? Okay. I just need to put a conduit or whatever directly underneath there. I can do that. I think, do I not have extra conduits? Ah, uh, we got a flux, the, uh, the resonant flux duct. All right, so we can just stick one of those here. All right, so that should be getting power now. Yep, there we go. Okay, so this is getting power. Everything's going. <laughs> we don't have to have the lava fabricator here wasting all of that power to do its job. Yeah, this is really, really good, guys. Uh, so I'm super happy about this. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, finish polishing this all up. I have, like, some marble covers and more marble blocks and all these other things and bits and pieces I took with me so I could get this all done. Yep, let me go ahead and do some more work here, guys, and we will move on. All right, guys, so I am back behind the base a little bit. Our base is, like, over there where the marker is. And yeah, this grasslands biome right behind has a lot of these IC2 rubber trees. This is where I've been going to collect all my rubber. Now, I just got done doing some crafting and used the last of it making some more rubber copper cables or whatever, insulated copper cables. Yeah, so I'm just over here collecting a little bit. And there's just so many of these rubber trees. It almost makes me feel like I don't... What's this? What am I collecting? Seeds? Yeah, it almost makes me feel like I don't need to set up a proper rubber farm, although it would be more convenient to do that. You have a cage on your head, cow. <laughs> ah, cool. So anyway, I got, you know, 40 of the sticky resin. That should get me by for now. Let's head back to the base real quick. Yeah, I just set down some of those machines that we made last episode. I'm preparing to try and use them for the first time. 
And our UU matter is over here. I think my jetpack just stopped making sound. <laughs> yeah, we've made over three buckets, like three and a quarter buckets of UU matter now, which is pretty awesome. Uh, I moved our igneous extruder. Is this thing not doing anything? No, it is. Yeah, I moved our igneous extruder that was making the cobblestone from over there. <laughs> over here, using that lava fabricator we sourced from uh, Wellington Tower. And yeah, so we are currently just creating obsidian. Unfortunately, we're not making lava fast enough where we can do 16 at a time. So anyway, yeah, we've made enough for a nine stack so far. So that's how I'm getting my obsidian. Or at least that's how I'm now going to get instead of manually mining it since we have all the power. And yeah, even with that thing going, like our power storage over here is still staying full. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Okay, so I laid down our scanner. And then I made a pattern storage, and right next to it I put a replicator, because the replicator needs to read what is inside the pattern storage in order to know what to replicate. So we can also put another replicator over here, and it can use the pattern storage just the same. And we might be able to put one on top too, but I don't think we're making UU matter fast enough where we have to worry about that just yet. Uh, so anyway, we have this crystal memory, and we have this iridium ore. Yep. So we can go ahead and scan that. It takes a minute to scan. I do, well, I was gonna say, I do think you can put in the overclockers, but this interface doesn't make me think you can. So yeah, we can put the iridium here, waiting, no storage, and we can put this empty crystal memory right there. Cool. <laughs> so yeah, this takes a minute for it to go through the process. We are going to lose this iridium or it's gonna be no more, but we will know how to create it because an image of that will be stored on this crystal memory and then we can replicate it later with the UU matter. Cool. So the next thing I'd like to look at is actually making scrap so we can make this mass fabricator go faster, produce that UU matter faster. Uh, so to do that, we need to get some recyclers. So I made up four of these things. I don't know if we need four or not, but that's the amount that I made. Uh, so let's see, how are we gonna do this? I'm trying to think the best way to set this up because we want to have like cobblestone. I made another igneous extruder, by the way, another resonant one. I used one of the resonant machine frames over here. It's <laughs> just a straight make it the resonant version. And I put in all of the upgrades so we can do the uh, large amount of cobblestone. So yeah, we want to pipe cobblestone into this thing. And I'm not sure the best way to do that because we need to power it from the back and we need cobblestone to go in there and we need to remove the scrap. I'm kind of thinking maybe we'll move our energy conduits that are right here and we will put the igneous extruder down below. I think that might make the most sense. So we will pipe in the items from below. So do, I don't know, something, something like that. Uh, we'll pipe in the items from below like so. And then we can also have pipes coming off the side to go into the other ones. Um, I'm not sure if it's better to have one recycler that's going max speed. These I know for sure you can put in the overclockers. So I don't know if it's better to have one that's going max speed or have four of them that are going the normal speed. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe for right now, we'll just do one. Okay, so this is getting power. We are going to be providing the cobblestone into it. We should give it some water. This is set to the cobblestone. Let's make sure. Yeah, the output set to the top. And lava. So I filled up a lava drum back here. Yeah. So our smeltery now is fully full of lava. The drum below it is now full. Uh, so we can put that in there. Okay, so that is now creating cobblestone. That's ejecting it up to the top. And now this is turning that into scrap. Now, I, I can't remember what it is like a 25% chance or 10% chance or something. But yeah, eventually we will see scrap here. And the faster this goes, the higher the chances that we will see scrap. So maybe we should source some of these overclocker upgrades. Maybe from the compressor. I'll have to make more of these things. All right. So if we do that, there we go. Now it's using that cobblestone pretty quickly. And we are keeping up with the production from down below. So maybe I'll end up having to make a few of those things. These igneous extruders to pump in multiple recyclers. Uh, another thing you can do, <clears throat> yeah, another thing you can do 
is like auto craft these into i don't know for instance you could auto craft those into slabs so you could get twice the amount of cobblestone but then you have to worry about the auto crafting and powering that stuff um yeah so we got a stack of that i think the next thing i'd like to do is get a compacting drawer because you can take these scrap and you can uh turn them into scrap boxes and these are the same exact thing as a scrap uh, they just last nine times longer as an amplifier. So, uh, for instance, if we were to put this into our mass fabricator, we put one of those in there, it lasts that long. We put, oh, I didn't, did I not make the scrap box? I mean, that scrap box. If we put the scrap box in there, it lasts nine times longer. So it's the exact same thing. It's just, you know, it doesn't eat as many. So we don't have to have as many items piping in there as often. Um, it kind of makes some sense to do that. So I think what I'll do is I will make a, oh man, we just made another stack of those. Yeah, I think I'll make a compacting drawer to sit on top of this thing and we'll have a thing that auto ejects the scrap box, the scrap into that, which will make scrap boxes. And then we'll figure out a way to get those over to our mass fabricator. Okay, cool. So let me go ahead and work on that and we'll be back. All right, well, I set up another igneous extruder resonant over here. So we had two of them, both piping directly into recyclers. And yeah, that's keeping these things full of items. And they are making scrap at a decent rate. I do have 10 overclocker upgrades in both of these that I source from our other machines over here. So I definitely have to make more of those to keep these things all going. Uh, I put one resonant retriever right here on the uh, mass fabricator. And that is pulling the scrap out of these machines. Uh, I tried the compacting drawer and unfortunately you cannot use the compacting drawer for the scrap into scrap boxes. And I think the reason for that is because you can't convert the scrap box back into nine scrap. I think that's the reason for that. And if I remember correctly, you should be able to right click on these and get a random item. <laughs> so yeah, uh, wooden hoe. Great. That's best item ever. Uh, we totally don't want to put that in the recycler and recycle that. <laughs> okay. So anyway, our mass fabricator here is getting a lot of scrap and it is working. It's doing pretty good. Uh, we obviously need more, um, more scrap in here, more recyclers to recycle stuff to keep this full all the time. So it's constantly using an amplifier, but for right now you can see it's the progress is going pretty quickly. Now I was checking over on our MFSU, our EU battery over here to make sure that we were keeping up on the power. And sure enough, this is staying steady. We are not losing power at all. Uh, it's kind of hard to see, but I have like these HP wire connectors on multiple uh, connections on our pipes down here. So it's piping in EU on multiple sides and keeping this thing full that way. And our power supply over here, I just double checked a moment ago. All of these are full as well. So we are definitely not using too much power here, which is awesome. Cool. So now that we got this all set up, our scanner is completed says it takes 120 millibuckets of UU matter for that item we scanned and we need to save this onto the crystal memory. So let's save. And this is item iridium or UU matter 120 millibuckets. Cool. So we should be able to put this over here in the pattern storage and then we have to import from crystal. So now the pattern storage knows all about this. So that stays on here and I think we can wipe this and reuse it, but I don't want to do that. If I ever move our pattern storage, I want to be able to import these memories again. So definitely do not want to lose that. Okay. So our replicator here, we should now be able to select Iridium Ore because it's next to this pattern storage and the pattern storage knows how to do that. Cool. So we need 120 millibuckets of UU matter in here for this thing to do something. So let us pipe into here some UU matter. Oops. Okay. So yeah, there we go. We got 3,406 millibuckets and we just have to click single run or we can say repeat run. It'll just keep making these things over and over. I think we'll do repeat run. Yeah. And that'll drain out the 120 millibuckets to make our iridium. So we can also put more overclocker upgrades into this guy. Where are we at? Something like that. Yeah. Look, we can make this stuff much faster. Uh, we are not keeping up on the power, but there we go. There's our Iridium Ore back. I might have to set up more of those MFSUs over here. We might be draining power. No, that's keeping up. Okay, well, anyway, uh, we made our first Iridium Ore. Now we are up Iridium Ore from where we started. Awesome. 
Cool, so now we are automatically making Iridium ore. We need 128 of these to make an ME controller so we can start into Applied Energistics. Guys, I am super, super excited for this. Oh man, I've, I've been really enjoying the storage drawers and we still may get some use out of these things, especially these compacting drawers. These are really cool, I like these. Uh, we still might get some use out of these uh, with Applied Energistics hooked up, but I definitely would like to get Applied Energistics going. Oh man, I'm super <laughs> excited for that. Oh, and that, and we're also going to be able to start doing some other things. Like, I think the pellets of RTG fuel, we can also replicate. We'd have to scan and do the crystal memory thing and all of this stuff. But for right now, I think the next thing we need to work on is getting more power, more EU power. I mean, we're making a lot of the RF power, but these machines require that other power supply. And while we can convert it using immersive engineering, it would be much better just to create the stuff straight uh, straight away and you know pipe that directly into these machines there's a few different things that we can make um I, what was the other one i was looking at there was a well let's just type up generator there is the yeah semi-fluid generator this thing right here and i think we can start pumping in like uh build craft fuel into this and this will provide 32 eu a tick which doesn't sound like that much, but we can, you know, scale this and add, I don't know, 10, 20, 30 of these things all using that fluid. And yeah, we'll be making a whole lot of EU power. So yeah, there's some things that we can do to increase our power supply. Other things, we can take this Iridium Ore and we can start making solar panels. Uh, we can get all the way up to the quantum solar panel. Actually, I think at this point it'd be better just to make the ultimate hybrid solars instead of the quantum because it does not give you more power output the quantum from what I remember from infinity and then also requires this uh, this core here which takes a whole heck of a lot more iridium I think that's another 128 yep so anyway uh, these are things that we're gonna be working on for right now we are making iridium ore which is super awesome guys I'm gonna look at trying to get this thing powered faster and hopefully we can make a whole bunch of this stuff uh, before next episode but yeah I think we're going to go and wrap the episode up here for today, guys. <laughs> yeah, lots of cool stuff. Hopefully, we are done messing around with Wellington Tower. <laughs> Seems like we're over there every single episode now. But yeah, I think we're pretty much set for right now. The only thing we need to do is add some more generators. And I can do that whenever. When we start running a little bit low on power, I can just, you know, craft up some more, throw them over there. We got all the room for them. So yeah, that's pretty cool. All right, guys, that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like on this episode if you did like it, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.